I want to share with you how to access the power that we already have. That power is on the inside of us. Three thoughts about accessing this power. So we can have an increase or a greater manifestation of this power working on our behalf. And the first one is to have an upright heart. Be sincere and genuine like you are this morning. You're tired of being overcome. You're tired of being walked on by the devil. You're tired of your emotions running all over you and keeping you in a place of bondage. You want to rise up and move on to victory, but you shall receive power, and that power is on the inside of you. Now here, in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 9, when you and I have an upright heart, number one, we'll activate the power of God. We'll access it. For the eyes of the Lord run. You know what God's eyes run? To and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself what? Strong, mighty, and powerful in the behalf of them whose heart is what? Perfect, upright, sincere, and genuine toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from thenceforth thou shalt have wars. When he was walking up rightly before God and of a sincere heart, the power of God was displayed and his enemies were destroyed. But then he began to trust in what? Making pacts and covenants with the people. And he forfeited the power of Almighty God. And God was no longer pleased. Have we forfeited anything? Don't forfeit the power of God. Let his eyes run to and fro and find you. It wouldn't matter to me if you're sitting in a stupor somewhere and you say, I can't even think. But you sit right on there and just say, it doesn't matter what I think or what I feel. I'm calling on the name. I'm calling on. If there's all you can do is call on the name. Call on the name. I'm calling on the name. I'm calling on the name. There is a power in that name. I'm calling upon the name. My heart is sincere enough right before you, Father God. I'm as far as I'm concerned. I want the reality of the power of that name operative in my life. That's number one. Call upon the power of the name. Have an upright and sincere heart. And praise God, he'll show himself strong on your behalf because your heart is upright before him. Number two, we find this in Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse 28. An important step. Wait on the Lord. Wait on God. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not neither is weary aren't you glad God's generator is always working there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint well if you're fainting you're in a good place he gives power to the faint to them that have no might he increases strength how even the youth shall faint and be weary. As young as I am, sometimes I get a little tired. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that what? They that what? Intermingle with God. Connect with God. Have a long time with God. Walk with God in the cool of the day. And just visit with God once in a while. Every single day. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their what? Their what? Their power, their might, the anointing of God that's in them. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they will not faint. Praise God. Don't do it in your own strength. When God says, I've got power, I've got might, I've got strength for you. Number one, be sincere in your heart. Number two, wait upon me. Don't get out there before me. Wait upon me. Sit yourself down in my presence and let me intermingle with you and impart to you my might. Paul prayed that the church of Ephesus would be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And number three, I love this number three. You want to tap into the awesome power of God? It requires faith on the part of the child of God. In Mark's gospel chapter five, we're talking about healing today. God healing, God's healing power. Whatever it is that we need healed from and of Jesus. When this woman with the issue of blood 12 years, spent all that she had, was nothing better, rather grew worse. Came in the press behind, touched his garment, for she said, if I touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She came in the press and she touched his garment, immediately knowing in, in himself that virtue had gone out of him. Word virtue is the same word dunamis, it's miracle working power. It was so released from his life, when she touched him, he knew it was a touch. Not an observation, but a touch of faith. And he said, who touched me? Someone made a demand upon my ability. And he said, who touched my clothes? In verse 34. And he said to her, daughter, thy faith, thy faith, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace 
You see, her problem was a plague. Her problem was an issue of blood. A blood flow that was zapping her life. Taking away from her the very necessity of life. The true element of life. Life of the flesh is where? It's in the blood. And it was just pouring out of her and pouring out of her. And she was getting weaker and weaker. And there was nothing any man can do. She exhausted all that. But when she touched, she touched his garment. There was a solution to her problem. And that solution was the Son of God. And that solution was the power flow that flowed into his being and out of his being into her. And she was made completely healed and completely whole. Why? Because there is a source uh, of power that helps us become whole. Now, in closing, I want us to uh, n write some things down. Five steps I want to share with you about being delivered from emotional pain and hurt. God's not just concerned about our physical well-being. He's concerned about our emotional well-being. And His power is ever, ever present to meet all the needs and solve all the problems that we have. But unless we tap into that power, you see, it's just going to be there dormant, doing nothing like the power of the atom. But if we'll learn to tap into it and access it with a genuine heart, waiting upon Him in His presence until an exchange takes place, and then using our faith. And I mean, we're talking about a faith that just says, enough is enough, I'm not taking this anymore. I believe what Jesus did. I want to see the reality of it. I'm not giving up. For more information about Christian Assembly Family Church or to subscribe to our free podcasts, please visit us on the web at cafamily.net.